VFX Bro here. We're going to be going through a breakdown and short tutorial on the effect in the Final Cut King YouTube Next Step video. Let's go ahead and take a look here. Now the effect we see is uh, a shot that starts off with Zack and then pans over to see Zack take down all of these bad guys. And so a few things we did here is one, we kind of cheated the amount of bad guys by because we really only had two guys on set, but we kind of uh, duplicated them by um, having them run through all these actions at different times and then masking a bunch of different shots together. Um, the, while this was shot on a tripod and then giving the illusion of having all these guys there at one time. Um, Andrew Kranimer kind of runs through the details um, on videocopilot.net. Uh, but the part we're gonna be going over today is the transition that we make from Zach to this, this because this is shot on a tripod, um, but yet we see Zach here um, in a moving shot. So how we're going to do this is we're going to start off by taking our original shot here, bringing that into a new composition, and you can see that the sh shot actually started back here, came up on Zach, ran around him, and then it popped up to turn around here. We can see the original shot, when you turn around there's no one there. And uh, that's how it was in real life, um, but we added in those other people. Um, so the way we did that was we took a second shot um, that was as close to this um, spot right here as we could get, and uh, this is what we got. Um, was this shot right here? It was a little bit earlier in the day, so it's brighter you can see, and um, we basically meshed together all these shots of different bad guys. Um, let's go ahead and get started. First, you're going to do is go composition settings. We're going to extend this so that we have some more time to work with. Make it 16 seconds. And um, okay, so all that we really need to do is um, be specific on what we shoot um, on the day of shooting. And we can see here that what we did was before that tripod shot, we actually started it off, um, panned down here, um, and we are using that to kind of mix in. So we see here that. Um, the move starts right about here, and we want to we want to switch it over when it's the blurriest. Um, so right around there looks good, and let's go over to the shot right about there looks about the same spot, and we're just gonna match that up. And so we can see here it switches over nicely. It's a little bit bigger, but the audience doesn't really notice that. Um, and then. What we're going to do is also we're going to change the levels a little bit because we can see that this shot is brighter than this shot. So we're going to take our levels here selected, bring it onto our top layer, and we are going to darken this down a little bit. Um, and we can actually make a side by side comparison here by first having this selected. Here's a nice little tool. What we can do is take a snapshot and then go back to that snapshot. Um, right away. We can go back to that by just hitting this show snapshot and but button right here. So that's probably not the best frame to use. Let's go back um, to right about there actually. And let's take a snapshot of that. And then let's go to our new frame here and let's take a look at that. So it's pretty close, probably a little bit darker even. So we're going to bring this down even more right about there and let's show that. And that looks pretty consistent. That's pretty good there. Again, we're just looking for the brightness. We're not looking for anything as far as the content of the shot. And then it pans over. So that's a pretty smooth transition right there. Um, again, when you're shooting, you want to make sure that your um, shutter speed is probably around 120 or less. That way you have a decent amount of motion blur, which masks the uh, transition effect. You can see we have this terrible shadow there. Um, not something that we uh, don't, can't fix with um, just kind of cropping in the shot a little bit. Um, another thing that we're gonna do here is if we kind of uh, run through this here, Action. Action. We can kind of see that it stops abruptly. 
So what we want to do is add a nice camera shake so that it kind of eases into that shot. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this shot and make it into a new composition. And then we're going to add a camera shake to it. So we're actually just going to hit shake and uh, we're going to add that to our footage. And it's not going to start till we get up here um, towards the end. It's going to start right about here when it ends. So we'll go right there. We're going to change our speed. Let's try one and uh, see how that shake looks. Action! Action! It's probably a little too much or not enough shake there. We want to get some more shake going on. So we're going to select that. We're going to make it the positioning of the shake higher. And we're going to make the speed probably, let's try 1.5. And then another thing we're going to do is we can see that we have that shadow there. So once it gets to this point right here, we're actually going to scale up so set a keyframe there and then from the time that it gets to right here where the shadow starts to begin we're going to scale it so that we don't see that shadow all right let's take a look here um we can see that the shot transitions over very nicely we got a nice camera shake afterwards that adds to the illusion that it's a handy cam and that it's all one continuous shot. This has been VFX Bro with a brief tutorial and overview of the multiple shooter effect in the Final Cut King YouTube Next Up video.